Hey residents of Meeple Town, it is the late 1500s in Triora, and in the town of Triora, witches are being persecuted and burned at the stake, and so we are coming in as witches to defend them and to destroy this town. Let's get to the table and check this worker placement game out. All right, so here is the setup for Triora. We've got the main board here. This is where we're gonna be placing our workers and taking all of our actions. We also each have our own individual player boards on the side that's gonna show how many potions we have of those different kinds. And we also have these different colored herbs that are gonna be used to, to make those potions. So on our turn, to start the game off, we are going to determine the player order and which bonuses we are going to get. So since I am technically a little farther on the... You always do that. I'll do that. To a little farther oh on the... Oh my gosh. <laughs> on the Inquisition track, then I will go ahead and place mine first and I'll immediately take that action and then John will determine who is going to be first and second player. What would you do if I just slapped that off the table <laughs> right now? <laughs> I almost did. Might just, be a little disappointed. Just for the YouTubes. All right, so to start off, I am going to, I think I'm gonna just gonna place here the last spot, which is gonna move me two up on the Inquisition track, which by the way, is bad. You don't wanna be super high on the Inquisition track. So move up two on there, and then I'll get three coins. Whoop, put that zombie back over there, and now it's John's turn to place. Alrighty, so I think I'm gonna go here, which means I go backwards one on the Inquisition track, and I get to move, the shovel means that I get to move three of my herbs across one of the shovels here on this rondelle. So I wouldn't wanna go backwards. Um, you'll kinda see that here in a minute. So I'm gonna move three of these forward to this little spot, right? That's right. Her. All right, so now I'll explain a little bit more of the game. That just gets us kicked off. What we're gonna be doing is we each have two workers. We have a witch and a familiar, and we're gonna be placing them on the board. The familiar can only be placed in a spot by itself. The witch can be placed in a spot with other characters, and they'll also get bonuses that are at the bottom of each of these different worker placement spots. And um, then if, if I place mine here and then John comes behind and places his worker here, then he'll also, I'll also get this bonus if he places in that same spot. If it's your witch. <clears throat> Correct, if it's my witch. Which witch do you have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Which witch? That's a good one. <laughs> do you have? You, are you, yes. <laughs> All right, so I think that's the start of the game, honestly, is kind of a tricky time to place your workers. So what I think that I'm going to do is, is just go ahead and start off building some potions, I think, to start off. So I'm gonna place my familiar here, and this says that I get two, uh, two of the cauldron actions, which lets me build potions that are here. And it's my familiar, so I'll actually only, excuse me, I'm gonna play my witch. When I play my witch here, I will get an additional cauldron point. So that means right now I can build three cauldrons. I have to do my witch's one first. And, and does it matter what order you do these in? Yeah, correct. It doesn't matter which order you do these, but it does matter which order you do your initial cauldron that you get. And that's anytime you place your witch anywhere on the board, gotcha. you get that cauldron. All right, so with the witch, I'm going to take my cauldron and I'm going to build the purple ones. They all have names. <laughs> I'm probably not going to use their names, but this one is uh, play two blue, and I get two of the purple ones, which are the Maledictionus. There we go, Maledictionus. And then I will play the two red. That's going to be my first one here. The two red is going to give me two red potions. And then let's see, I've got some green and yellow, so I'm just going to I'm going to move all of them. How about that? I'm going to move all the rest of those over there to get two of the uh, invoxionus, invoxionus. Did I say that right, John, you think? Uh, I think it might be invocationus. <laughs> yep, invocationus. That's pretty sure that's what I said. All right, <laughs> invoxionus. So whenever I place my, uh, whenever Ooh. I place my witch down here, I can, uh, I'm on here, I get the bonus down here. And so in this one, in this case, I can sell one of those to be able to gain three coins or sell two to get four coins. And I think that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and sell this Invocationist. <laughs> and I will get uh, four, excuse me, three coins for that. So that brings my total up to th them three coins. Six coins. Man. Which will be, help down in this space over you here. You'll be getting some money, yo. Yep. All right, my goes. I'm gonna go right here and I will get my first cauldron action because I placed the witch there. And for my first cauldron action, I am going to take two of these blues. 
And I think Dean had mentioned, but I'll just mention yet again, anytime you pass this little cauldron here, you're going to do your brewing. Do your brewing. So I, the two blues passing the cauldron mean, what am I doing? It means I get two purples. I'm not even going to try to pronounce these, by the way. All right. I'm just going, I'm just Maybe saying Maybe if they purples. had names like Bob or... I don't know. Suze. But now I can do these in either order, right? Correct. You so can't take I'm that I'm going to go ahead and take that cauldron action in order to take two reds and cross over this boiling pot and get two of those. Then I am going to, I'm going to go forward three on the Inquisition track. And then I'm going to get to buy one of these cards, which will score me points at the end and also give me bonuses uh, potentially, or give me bonuses throughout the game. So I'm going to take two reds. So the two reds that I just got, I'm going to spend and the one purple in order to get this fellow right here. And I'm going to get him because um, at the end of the round, I'm going to be able to get two shovel actions for free. Yep, that's right. So there we go. And I'm going to slide these up. All right, so now I'm gonna place my familiar and I'm just gonna put it right down here in this center spot. And remember the familiar has to be by itself when you place it. And so immediately I'm gonna to get to move up on this track and take that action. So for me, I've already spent all of my herbs and I need to be able to replant them, harvest them and put them back into play. And so that's what I'm gonna to try to do. So I'll move up here automatically and that lets me move four through. So I'm gonna move two red and two blue, whether that's the smart thing to do or not, is TBD. We'll see how that works it's, out. And when it comes to you, it's never TBD. <laughs> that's right. Um, and now I can pay to be able to move up on the track one more time to get four points, which is a really good, I think, it's worth it to pay the two coins to do that. But I have some other things in mind for these coins, so I will just do that, that's it. So I could do this, I can't do this because I don't have my witch in that spot. All right, doesn't seem like this is the, I wanted that track is what I wanted, but Dean took it. I'm just gonna come up here and then I'm gonna be able to move uh, three more across. So I'm going to take, um, let's see here. You know what, let's just, let's just move them. I'm gonna go one, two, three, and then I also get one victory point and I don't get that because that is not my that is your Which. kitty cat. Oh man, I just cat moved you ahead. I'm a kitty cat. That is not good. And a meow, 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 and a meow, meow, meow. That, That's, that is... Uh, I've never <laughs> thought about walking off the video <laughs> until this moment. All right, so that kind of ends the worker placement part of the round. And we will now be moving, starting off moving the Inquisitor. Now what the Inquisitor is going to do is move two spaces to uh, the closest path to the one that's farther along the Inquisition track, which is gonna be me. Now, this is actually good for me. I was hoping that John didn't take a spot that would move him farther ahead because if he did, it's possible that it would have moved up here to my familiar and that would have made me lose points. So when the, or not lose points, but move up on the Inquisition track. So if the Inquisitor moves into a space with a witch, you move up five on the Inquisition track, or two if it moves into a space with your familiar, and that's if it passes through or lands. So it doesn't hurt either and one of us. you don't want to get here. Should you just go ahead and share Yeah, that? I'll go ahead and explain. So there's, there's two ways the game's, uh, the end game triggers. One is when three out of four of these locations are destroyed. You've got the dungeon, you've got the l l river, the village, uh, I'm sorry, the village and the fields, I think is what it is. And when you fill up these spots with your little um, markers there in a two-player game, which is what we're playing, once three of those get filled, that, sit, that location is destroyed. And you're trying to do three of those, uh, or you are, when you get three of those, that triggers the end of the game. Or if a player moves up all the way to number 32 on the Inquisition track and the Inquisitor moves into the spot of their witch, you actually lose the game. There is player elimination. However, yeah. that does it does trigger the end of the game, and so you'll be eliminated, but you'll still score all the rest of the players. So. There you go. All right, so we've moved the Inquisitor. Now we're gonna move Morgana. Now Morgana does the opposite, moves two, two spaces to the one closest, or, or farther behind on the Inquisition track, which is you. And I believe this would be the fastest space to go through there. Now she's only going to affect witches in their spaces, so just because she went through my familiar spot didn't do anything. And then we will take our, um, we'll move on to the next phase, which is when we're going to get all of our resources. So right. anything we have in this spot is gonna slide over. So there we are go. planting our seeds, or I'm sorry, in this case we are, yeah, planting them. I think that's, right? 
planting. I, them. I yeah. don't. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm going with you, bro. <laughs> we're planting our herbs, and then after that, we get bonuses from cards, which yeah, I don't. So get I any. get two shovels, so I'm going to take these two and slide them up there. All right, and then we're going to get ready to start the round again. So we'll take our markers back, and we'll play through one more round to show you how things play out. All so right. I will. Let's see. I would like to be able to take some more shovel actions, and so I think that's what I'll do. I'll move one down on the Inquisition track and then take three shovel actions, which will move these three straight up. Or I can move these down. Yep, I'll do that, so I'll have some to use this time. <sighs> I kind of want to go first. Um, but let's see what old Deanie's got over here. Okay. But I kind of would like some coins as well. So I'm actually going to go here and go up two on the track and get three coins because I ain't got snow money. All right. All right. Okay. Now we will start the worker placement actions. And so I will, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but I don't think I did. Now we have our workers out on the board. They stay out there. They're not coming back to us at all. When we place a worker, it has to be in a new location. So now when we're placing our workers, right now they're laying down. When we place them, they'll be standing up to show that we've used them for that round. So I will, let's see, I'm just gonna go down here. I've been saving up some coins for this. And so on this one, it works different than the other spots. So you're gonna look at these different potions and you're gonna pay one of those and take one of the actions that's listed on there by paying the coins that's listed above that. So I think what I'm gonna do is pay five coins and I will pay a, let's see, I think I'm gonna pay a red potion, move that down one, so that I will, now nah, what the hey, we're gonna go crazy, let's pay a, Get them big points. Yeah, we'll play the purple potion, so that's going to move me up one. So the red potion, what the, I'm sorry, move down one. The red potion moves you back farther on the Inquisition track, it doesn't give you as many points. Purple moves you up on the Inquisition track, potentially a lot, but you get a lot of points. So I'm paying five, so I'll put my marker right here to show that I'm taking that number five now spot. Now I can't do that. And pay these coins. And so I will move up six on the Inquisition track. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I will take 18 points, which will move me up to 38, and I am destroying John. Wow. It also gives me two crowns at the end of the game. You get points for crowns that are, uh, however many crown points you have. All right. Yep, okay, I'm gonna take my witch and, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go over here. So, oh, by the way, I forgot to take my cauldron action, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Oh you. my goodness! I would have done that at the beginning of my turn. Of Normally, he, he was so excited about scoring points <laughs> so that just, he didn't take the cauldron that's action. That's right. That's right. Um, oh, oh, oh! Actually, I I have to go back and do this all over again before you start your turn. I the reason why I did this is to take this bottom action with the witch. All right. Oh my god! Now I try not to do this in real time game, but just to show you how all Let me this, just go back all here. this plays. All right, so. At the, the witch's bonus on this one is way different than the other one. So what I can do is pay seven points. I lose seven points, which I will. And when I do that, I can now take one of my markers and place it in another spot on the board, which is going to also give me that bonus action. So I think what I'll do is I'll just put it up here. And when I do that, that's gonna give me eight points. So I lose seven to gain eight. And then I will also move up one on the Inquisition track. Um, and then even though it was my witch, I don't take that bottom action, but that's um, that's how this space works so differently than the other ones. Yep. Sorry about that. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> Goodness gracious. See, I kind, I wouldn't mind going here and maybe I've got, I could do this action because um, I've got three coins, but if I go here, then it unlocks this action for Dean, which would allow him to give up seven more victory points to do that yet again. I like those decisions that you are making in the game. He <laughs> locked that in. It's okay. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm gonna do my first cauldron action, which is, I'm gonna do, yeah. Uh, do I wanna do that, actually? Let me think about this. Um, I had it all planned out. <laughs> I was ready to go. And then I decided, I'm deciding to do something else. Yeah, okay, I am gonna do something else. I am going to take my green and yellows, and I'm gonna do two of those, which is gonna give me two of these. That's my first cauldron action. My second, I'm not going to actually be able to do three, um, but my second is going to be to take these two reds, put them over here, 
and go up yet again on the red track. And then because it's my witch, I'm going to give up one of those red potions that I just got to get three coins as Dean did last round. And that's it. All right, so I mentioned that you can't move your familiar in a spot of another player. The forest is different because you might not be able to see it on the camera, but there's actually um, six different spots in this area. And so what I'll do is place my familiar in the spot and that's gonna give me just three shovel actions, which I desperately need. So I'll move one up there and then I will take, let's see. I'll take a green and a yellow. So I actually am gonna have to spend a, my whole next turn just kind of gaining more shovel actions to be able to get more resources. And I'll move up one victory point. All right, that was pretty quick. I'm gonna take my kitten and we are, <coughs> I'm getting a little choked up over here. Just, can I place it where the Morgana is? You can. Okay, I thought I could, but I just wanted to verify. That's right. Um, Cause, okay. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna spend this little eye, I'm just gonna call it an eye potion to be able to do this action. Again, you have to spend the potions to do these big actions here or whatever, which then is going to get me four coins. It's not bad. I'm rolling the monies now. I'm going for the big, big action, Dean. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna take one, two, and I'm gonna have to go up three, one, two, three on the Inquisition track. I cannot do this because this is my familiar and not my witch, but I am gonna put one of these up on there. So there we go. Right. All right, so then we'll just show how this, um, the end of the, the round works. And so, like I said earlier, the Inquisitor moves two spaces to the closest player. I knew, gotcha. uh, I knew that was taking the risk of losing that battle, but I think it was worth it. So what happens is, it is my witch, so I will move up five. One, two, three, four, five. Move me closer along. Now there's lots of ways that you Starting can- Starting to feel a little toasty? Getting a little, a, little, a little warm in here? Getting a little nervous now, that's right. Um, then we're going to move Morgana two spaces towards you, which will be, let's see, one, one and, and let's see, I believe, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four. And so she'll move through the cemetery if there is a tie there first. And then we will take our nighttime action. So we're gonna slide our herbs over. Which I don't have any of those. Look at all that's bad. That's a lot of, that's a lot just sitting there. That's right. But now I get to have two uh, shovel actions because of this. So I'm gonna go ahead so I can get a little something this next round. <laughs> so we're both kind of in that same boat where we're gonna be um, having to take actions yeah. for the shovels. All right, and that's that's the gameplay. We'll show you and then we would just keep doing that over and over again. Um, what do you think about the art and components, Sean? Okay, so the art and components, I think they're they're pretty nice. I With the camera angle and stuff and, and the lighting, I hope that it shows it well because it is pretty dark here. So yeah. it's harder sometimes to pick up on some of the subtleties of the board, but I think the board looks uh, pretty darn nice. With I, the camera, I, don't, I think face With the face, cameras, yeah, that's what I You can see I'm, it totally fine. Exactly, and that's what I meant. Like it, it's, it, it may not be, I don't want them to think that it's uh, too dark or something like yeah. that, recognizing that it's it, it, you can pick it up a whole lot better um, face to face. I like the art on the cards, I think they're solid. I like the art on the boards here. I think everything is component wise, I only have one complaint about the components, which uh, I'll just say right now, it's this part of the board. Some of these stick, like this one's really stuck right now. And I wanna be careful because I could totally see that getting all frayed and all that kind of stuff. So it could, and we, um, you know, put those, we've moved the, those around enough that I don't think it would have, it hasn't messed them up yet. So for no. me, that's not a huge negative. And some of them- It's not a huge negative. Yeah. It's just it's just one little thing I'm, uh, I don't love, but- yeah. Some of them I don't push all the way down um, just because it's set up that way. But besides that, I mean, the recess boards are beautiful. I mean, I, I think it's great. I, I love these little potion bottles. I just think, I think it's the really The familiars well are all cool. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, I mean, I- yeah, it's good. Yeah, Solid. I love the components in it. I think yeah. it's great. All right, what about gameplay? What about the gameplay? <laughs> you go first. Okay, all right. So with gameplay, I think there's a lot of unique pieces about this game. Um, you know, there's worker placement. There's there's Rondell, which is um, kind of Terra Mystica-esque and how that works. John will probably talk about that. He likes it. Um, moving up on the Inquisition track and how there's this, there's this danger going on with the Inquisition track, yeah. which I think is... That's really cool. I really enjoy that piece of it. Uh, you also have the the fresco and viticulture type um, starting player thing that's I love going those. on there. I yeah. like that a lot. Yeah, so I'd say there's a lot of mechanics from other games used in this, um, which is not a bad thing necessarily. I think that's that's kind of cool how it uses those um, 
So anyway. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I like this um, very much. You have those decisions that you're making over the course of the game. Do I want to go get shuffles? Because you could end up like I'm right here, where you don't really have much to do the next round because you didn't get the pieces all the way around. Is it a good idea to have to where you're getting something every round? Or are you okay with grabbing a bunch of things one round and then doing other actions the next round and all that kind of stuff. But then if you're using your witch, you could be wasting cauldron actions. And this game is all about efficiency, I believe. Like you're, you, I mean, as Dean mentioned, whenever three of these things are covered up or the game's over, unless you burn up first, unless you get burned at the stake. So like you're really racing, trying to say, how can I most efficiently put these out, um, get the most points, the most efficiently, make the potions the most efficiently. Um, because even though we've played a two player game, like we've shown here and it can, it can end and it doesn't take too awful long an hour or so. I think it took mm -hmm. us the first time that we played this game. So, um, yeah, you got to make sure that you're making those decisions and not not being inefficient and not using cauldron actions and different things like that. So I think that's really cool. I also really like this little track here where you're going to go up one automatically. Then you could pay a potion to to go up another space. But if it's your witch, you can also do this like kind of jump thing and get a thing there and you jump again and you get two of those. Or you can go up two on the Inquisition track to go up one more. So there's some thoughtfulness in how to use that and when to capitalize on it. I wanted to use that last round, but Dean went ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's my fault. I could have gone up less on this track right here to start the game off. So I I really like that. So yeah, there's a lot of really interesting mechanics. This is a pretty big deal um, for the game down here. Uh, whenever you can score a ton, I mean, this last track here, 10 coins and a purple potion, you go up 12 on this, right? which is lots. Yep. But 30 points is lots of points as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 cool. I, I, I like the gameplay. It's it's enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, like I said, there's a lot of things going on, and and I think John's um, John's kind of alluding to that. So a negative with that for me is that, and, and this is for me, is I can, for some reason I I can be very AP in this game, and I'm not a very AP prone player. I don't think. I think I usually play my turns pretty quickly. But because he is the king of AP. The, the king of of being yeah you do of being prone to analysis i'm kidding okay <laughs> um that was sarcasm so, <laughs> that's good it was a good one i thought i was actually teeing you up for a joke about like ap in school like yeah i took all ap classes that was good maybe we should rehearse that next time yeah but for some reason this game because i'm there's a lot to think about they're moving uh moving out around the rondelle and figuring out, okay, I need to have these resources ready for the next round, but you only get two workers per turn. You also have to think about where your workers are going because of where the uh, Inquisitor and where Morgana is. So like, there's a lot to think about this game. That was one thing I didn't mention that I really do enjoy a lot because you are, when I, you're placing your worker and you may want a spot, but you also may realize if I go there, the Inquisitor's coming to get me and I'm right. gonna get, what, five up on the track, right? Yep. Which is not good. Yeah, yeah. Now with that too, because of all of that, there's lots of ways to get points. We didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't mention exactly how to get all the points, but you get points for, for crowns. I mentioned that earlier. You're going to be getting points points for um, you know different things going on throughout the game. You're going to get points at the end game for sets of these cards. You're going to get points for area control in each of these locations that are destroyed. And like all that's, um, it's, I'm sorry, not even just the ones that are destroyed, all those those locations. And so yeah. it's uh, it's just a lot. It's a lot. I'll say that. I For me, and I, it, again, it doesn't it, take a long time. And it's not a it doesn't feel like a lot for me, even though I'm not saying that like I'm not so smart. No, maybe. that has no. <laughs> no, I'm actually I'm just saying I'm surprised that you're saying that. I mean, you, he yeah. he waxed me in our first game, so I, if I lost to someone that's not so smart, what does that make me? Um, but I, I will say that I don't feel like it's an overwhelming amount. But I, I I have to admit I do forget occasionally something like the Inquisitor, and I go to a spot and go, oh yeah, I should have I should have thought about that. So. You know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just don't want. I just don't feel overwhelmed when I play the game. Not that I'm good at it. <laughs> and I don't know what. It, and this is kind of moving in my, to my my final rating. But um, I don't know what it is. Certain games. Um, I mentioned this when we did our Teo to Walk in review in our um, in our podcast. But certain games sometimes are just difficult for me to grasp. And it's not because the gameplay is difficult to play. It's just because I want to do really well. And if I'm overwhelmed by choices, sometimes it's difficult for me to feel like I'm making the right choice. And so I don't, but you do good. And so I don't feel clever. I think that's what it is, if, if I don't feel clever in a game. So for me, I'll go ahead and give it my final rating. I think this is a good game, and I think there's going to be people that absolutely love this game because there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. For me, I like this game, but I don't, 
I don't love it. Um, there, there's, uh, there is the excitement with the Inquisitor track, and I think that's really cool. But I don't feel like this sense of excitement as I'm playing this. You don't feel like it's the theme and stuff isn't grabbing you. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's yeah, that that could very well be it. Um, but it's something about it. But I think a lot of it has to do with the the making me feel clever and I'm making the best decision at that moment. Now, again, that's me. And so I give this game a six, which is, a, for me, that's a good game. I, I'll play this game. I'm just not going to want to play it all the time. You know, I might rather play another worker placement where I feel like I'm, uh, my brain's not hurting as much. And that's, I don't know, that's, that's not even the right way to say it because I don't think this is a difficult game to play. I just think it might not be the game that I always want to play. That's fair. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier, for my final thoughts, uh, it has a lot of cool mechanics in this game. Mm -hmm. I do say that, like, I, for sure. Um, but I'll say, thematically, I, I'm not a big fan of the theme, personally. Like, I, I don't really get into, like, the witches and stuff like that. So I say that to say, not to complain about it, but to say, if the theme is interesting to you, you might like it even more than I like it because of that. Um, but I did like the game. I, I do like the rondelle over here. I do like this piece here. I do like that there's a lot of different ways to score points. Um, so I think it's a solid game. I want to go ahead and I'm going to give it 7 out of 10. I think it's a, I think it's a good, solid game. Uh, yeah, so that's a pretty good score seven out of ten dean gives it i just i'm gonna steal your thunder that's dean, all right. dean always says this dean <laughs> gives it a six out of ten dean how do you <laughs> hey let's do it he all does right. it every time <laughs> dean how do folks get in touch with us so you can reach us on twitter and instagram that's at meeple town games you can also find us on facebook you can go to guild number 34 3407 get it right dean board game geek you can email us if you want to at meeple town games, meeple town games at, at gmail.com gmail podcast <laughs> podcast and hit the subscribe button if you like what you see on the YouTubes. All right. That's, that's it. All right. That's going to do it for this time. Thanks for coming down to Meeple Town. Thanks for joining us. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meeple Town Games. And connect with us on the Meeple Town Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meeple Town.